morning, good morning everyone who is watching us today. We thank God for such a great morning that God has given unto us. And we are grateful for he is so faithful and he is continuing to teach us giving as a way of worship. Uh, we have talked about uh, forms of, of giving and we began with tithing. We've looked at uh, free will giving and as we said that uh, free will giving was an instruction to the Israelites by God to donate to the place of worship uh, the bulls, the rams, and also goats, male. They were also instructed to give wheat or flour, wine, and everything that they were growing because they were uh, farmers. Today, God is calling us to give and to give cheerfully all that we have. Today, we have uh, money, we have our time, we have our resources, and all these are examples of free will. Israelites were told to give as the Lord moved their hearts. We are also instructed today that we should give as God moves our heart. So it is out of obedience, it's not a being compelled. We should also remember that we should not give out to gain prestige. We should not give to gain prestige. We should give because it is God who has moved our heart. And when the Spirit of God leads, then we shall give cheerfully. Jesus also taught about giving. And today we shall look at alms giving. Alms giving is an act of free giving tangible or intangible things to another person and especially the needy or the poor. We are called to give alms. We are called to remember the less fortunate. So Christian, Christians are called or Christian form of worship also involves alms giving or giving to the poor. And remember, when we give, we sow. When we sow, we shall reap. And Jesus taught that when we sow sparingly, we shall reap sparingly. But whenever we sow generously, we shall reap generously. Therefore, each of us, we are called to give how the Spirit leads or by being moved in our hearts, like Israelites were told, we are to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, because it should come from our heart as a way of obeying the teachings of God. God loves a cheerful giver, as it is written in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 and verse 7. Now when giving alms, it's good to look at where it had come from or the background of alms giving. In the times of Jesus' ministry, history has it that alms were given in three ways. And these three types of alms giving, one was that people used to give cash in the synagogues on the, every Sabbath. They were to give this uh, cash in the, in, in the temple, in the synagogues. And then this cash was to be distributed to the poor people so that they may also earn a living. They would also do a combination of food and cash at the marketplace. In the marketplace, they set aside food. Instead of selling everything, because there were so many needy people, those people who were taking their goods to the market, they would set aside those, food, the, those goods as food and also cash that they would earn after selling, and they would also distribute it to the needy in their society. Number three form of giving or arms was in the court of women. In the temple, uh, in the Jewish tradition, the temple was divided into different courts. There was the Holy of Holies, where it's only the priests were supposed to, 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 to get in there. There were the court of men, because men and women were not worshipping at the same place. And there was an, a, an outer court where the women were seated and also other people who were not allowed to the inner part of the temple. Now in the court of the women, uh, in, within the premises of the temple, they would put offering boxes into 13 different positions whereby 
women were encouraged to bring their free uh, to give, to bring their gifts and place them in those uh, offering boxes then this money would later be taken uh, to the needy people in the society but when jesus came he taught how to give he taught against giving alms to impress people and in the book of matthew chapter 6 verse 1 to 4 the bible says be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them if you do you will have no reward from your father in heaven so when you give to the needy do not announce it with the trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others truly i tell you they have received their reward in full but when you give to the needy do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that you you are giving may be in secret then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you so jesus taught against giving to impress people he taught against practicing alms giving so that you may be praised by people he also said that there are people who gave with the trumpets sounding ahead of them as they gave to the needy for such people jesus said that they will they will have no reward from our god because they have already received the reward by the uh, from the people who are praising them and that is a reward in itself jesus taught that when christians want to give alms they should do it in secret i remember somebody who commented sometimes back that when we are giving to the needy we've ever seen uh, different organizations and different individuals giving to the poor in today's society where people when they are going to children's home they are carrying cameras all over they want it to be uh, presented in the television or they want even to post in the social media platforms but jesus is teaching us today that we should do it in secret therefore today i'm also saying whenever we do alms giving let us leave cameras at home because we need to practice alms giving by following the example of jesus jesus taught them that whenever you give to the poor do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing this way the father in heaven who sees in secret will reward us abundantly our reward is greater in heaven so jesus is teaching us today that we should not refuse to give those who ask alms we should give them even if they ask for us in the streets and elsewhere but let us do it with a um, lot of uh, humility and a lot of not showing off without involving others to know that we are giver point number two about the teachings of jesus the teachings of jesus when giving arms can be found in the book of luke luke chapter 12 uh, luke chapter 12 reading from verse 13 luke chapter 12 reading from verse 13 jesus was teaching in form of a, a, a parable the bible says someone in the crowd said to him teacher tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me jesus replied man who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator between you then he said to them watch out be on your guard against all kinds of greed life does not consist in an abundance of possessions and he told them this parable the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest he thought to himself what shall i do i have no place to store my crops then he said this is what i will do i'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones and there i will store my surplus grain and i will say to myself you have plenty of grain laid up for many years take life easy eat drink and be merry but god said to him you fool this very night your life will be demanded from you 
then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. In this parable, Jesus taught Christians that they should not, or Jesus taught that a Christian could even sell his property to give to the poor so that the person may have treasure in heaven. Jesus was answering a young man who had come to him to ask what he should do to enter uh, the kingdom of heaven. According to Jesus, the young man was told to obey the laws of Moses. He said he had been observing all the laws. Jesus then told him to go and sell all the property and give out to the poor so that he can enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus taught that when a person sells his property and gives the proceeds out to the poor, he or she is providing for him or herself a pass that does not grow old. Such a person is also building a treasure in heaven where no moth can go and destroy it. No thief can go and steal it. Therefore, we are called to give to the less fortunate. This is what is called the arms giving or giving arms. It should be a deliberate action. It should, uh, we should also give without expecting anything in return. When we give to the poor, let us not give to the people who will later give us in return. Let us not give to our family who are able to give us in return or to our neighbors or to friends who are likely to invite us at some point. Rather, let us give to the lame, let us give to the blind, let us give to those who are really afflicted in life and they cannot in any way invite us back to have a dinner with them or to have an, a, a celebration with them because we are going to, re, to be repaid by God only. Jesus taught that we should give to those people who cannot give in return in this way. We are giving or we are putting our treasure in heaven. Therefore, when you're planning to give alms, do it in secret, do it to the less fortunate, do it knowing that you're having a possession in heaven, do it to the people who cannot give in return. May God bless you even as we continue with the topic on giving.